A mother pig and her three cubs were living in a tiny cottage deep in the forest. One day, the mother pig called her cubs. How about making pizza together today? Woohoo! Yeah! yeah! But some ingredients are missing. Corn, onion, and some tomatoes. Me and my brothers will go get the missing ingredients, Mommy. Don't worry, we'll be right back. So the three little pigs went out excitedly. They decided to part ways, as each of them would get different ingredients. One went to the cornfield, one to the onion, and the other to the tomato field. Meanwhile, the big bad wolf was hunting in the forest to feed his hungry stomach. Whoa! This smell? Pigs! Yes! I smell pigs! Seeing the little pig Gurky just ahead, the wolf followed him. When the wolf saw the pig heading towards the onion field, he reached the field just before him and hid among the large onions. The little pig Gurky arrived at the onion field a little later. He smelled them one by one to distinguish between sweet and bitter ones. Just as he was about to pick another onion, he touched the ear of the wolf. Hello, piggy! Ah! Wolf! Help! Hush! Calm down, champ. Tell me, what are you doing in the onion field? Gurky told the wolf that he was picking onions for pizza. When the wolf smelt the onion in Gurky's hand, his eyes watered. He said that this onion is bitter and that he can give the sweetest onion to him if he comes to his house. After thinking for a while, Gurky accepted the wolf's offer. They disappeared together. It was noon. The middle pig, Torky, has arrived in the cornfield. However, since the corn in the field exceeded his height, he could not reach the corn cob. Torky stacked several stones on top of each other and climbed on top of it. He was about to take one of the corn cobs, but he lost his balance and fell into the wolf's lap. Ah! Help! Wolf! The wolf gently placed Torky on the ground and told him not to be afraid. What are you doing here, Piggy? You almost got hurt? I'm picking corn for a pizza. It doesn't look so, but he <laughs> Already this morning, I gathered the most beautiful corn cobs with my tall stature. Come with me and I'll give them to you. The middle pig was overjoyed at the wolf's benevolence. Well, that would be really good. I'm not tall enough to pick corn. Torky disappeared with the wolf. It was now almost evening. Porky, the eldest pig, was picking tomatoes in a big field. Some of them smelled so good that he immediately swallowed them. Porky's stomach was filled with more tomatoes than his basket. While he was happily wandering around the field, his head suddenly hit a wooden stick and he fell to the ground. When he looked up, he saw the big bad wolf disguised as a scarecrow. Ah! Help! This is the wolf! Hey, Piggy, calm down. I won't hurt you. No, I don't believe you. You are the big bad wolf! Porky asked the wolf why he was standing in the tomato field shaped like a scarecrow. When the wolf said that he's helping the farmers in his spare time like this, the pig understood the good intentions of the wolf and relaxed a little. Why are you here, little pig? Well, I was picking tomatoes for pizza. Pizza? I love it! But just tomatoes are not enough. You also need cheese, mushrooms, peppers, and most importantly... Yeah? The most important thing is the oven, piggy! Oven! If you don't have a good oven, all these ingredients will go to waste! After thinking for a while, the eldest pig got the wolf right. 
because the oven in their house was too small and was not getting hot enough. Come on, eat from my oven's pizza. You won't be able to get enough of it. Porky accepted the wolf's offer and they went away together. When the sun went down and the mom came out, the mother pig was anxiously waiting for her cubs to return home. Meanwhile, the cries of the pig brothers were rising from the wolf's den. Help! 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 It turned out that the evil wolf had trapped all the pig brothers in a cage inside the den in order to deceive them and devour them. Then he arranged the woods one by one in the stove oven and set a huge fire. I forgot to tell you, piggies. My favorite pizza is pizza with pork. <laughs> the pig brothers hugged each other in fear. Just as the wolf was adding some more wood to the oven to make the fire bigger, Porky, the eldest pig, noticed the open sack of flour on the side. He reached out with difficulty, took a large handful of flour, and divided it into the hands of his brothers. Just when the bad wolf was about to open the cage door and throw the little pigs into the oven, they all threw the flour in their palms at the wolf. Ah, 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 my eye! Where are you? I cannot see! Come here quickly! The wolf could not see anything because of the flour smeared on his face. Taking this opportunity, Torky, the middle pig, quickly pushed the wolf into the cage. And the little pig, Gurky, locked the wolf inside. So what were you saying? Pizza with pork, huh? Now sit here with an empty stomach, so maybe you can come to your senses. And we can go eat our delicious pizza. Come on, brothers. No, you can't go. You can't just leave me here. Finally, the pig brothers gathered all the ingredients and arrived at their home. The mother pig was very happy to see her children. Ah, oh, you just want to bring some onions, corn, and tomatoes. Where were you kids? I was so worried. The pigs told their mothers what had happened to them one by one. Later, together, they made pizzas that smelled great and were very tasty. From that day on, Gurky, Torky, and Porky promised their mother that they would never accept anything from strangers without informing her. On the other hand, the big bad wolf had to make do with the smell of pizza coming from far away. Deep in the forest, near a lovely lake, was a wolf. A hungry wolf, whose stomach was growling. He had his eye on three tasty young pigs, and was waiting for an opportunity to catch them and make them his dinner. The oldest of the pigs was greedy and gluttonous. He was always eating his brother's food and never sharing his own food with them. Hey... That apple is mine. I'm saving it for later. Hmm. A greedy, gluttonous pig. I know very well how to catch you. <laughs> the bad wolf placed one of the gluttonous pig's favorite apples on the forest path, and he set a trap at the end of the road. <laughs> now eat these apples so that when I eat you, I will be full. <laughs> the giant gluttonous pig was overjoyed when, on his way home, he noticed that there were many kinds of apples on the ground. <laughs> oh, my favorite fruit. <laughs> ah. Ah. Here's another apple. <laughs> um, what? There are lots of apples here. I must take them all before my brothers see, because 
all of them are mine. Mine! <laughs> when the giant gluttonous pig tried to pick the last apple, the wolf pulled the snare rope and a huge heavy net fell on the pig. Even though the giant pig struggled, he could not escape from the net. Help! Help! What's happening? Help! Ha ha ha! You fell into my trap. I'm going to take you home and eat you, gluttonous pig. At that time, the pig brothers, who were really hungry, heard the voice of their brother. Help! Let me go! Help me! When they rushed towards the forest road in great haste, they saw that the evil wolf had caught their big, greedy brother. Oh no, we must save him. But, but I am not strong. I'm afraid of the wolf too. Despite everything, the brave little pigs decided to save their brother. They followed him as the wolf took the giant pig to his lair. Tired from carrying the giant pig, the wolf fell asleep. Psst! Hey! What? Is there someone there? <sighs> Shh! Be quiet! We came to save you! The pig brothers tried to push the wolf to save their brother, but they couldn't because they were not strong enough. Maybe if you'll give us the apples you hid in your bag, we can gather strength to save you. No, they're mine. If I get out of here, I'll eat them all. Oh, the noise of those piggies. Their voices haunt my dreams. I will eat them all. One by one. Yum, yum, yum. Then we're leaving. You stay here with the wolf. The giant pig was finally convinced. Um, wait, uh, okay, okay, take them. But, uh, I'll keep just one for my pig. Ah, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. Here, take them all. The brothers ate the food given by the giant gluttonous pig and were finally able to push the wolf aside. Together, the three pig brothers managed to rescue the giant pig from the net with great difficulty. Then, they quickly returned home. When the evil wolf woke up, he was very angry that the pig had escaped. Uh, no one can steal food from me. The giant gluttonous pig understood that stealing other people's food was actually greed. And from that day on, he was happy to share all his favorite food with his brothers, especially those beautiful, colorful apples. Once upon a time, right on the edge of the forest, lived a golden-haired girl. This golden yellow-haired girl's name was Goldilocks. She had such amazing and admirable locks that everyone who saw her was mesmerized. But despite her sweetness, at times she could be a rather naughty little girl. Every time she stepped out to play, her mother would have to warn her to behave. Darling, please stay in the backyard and don't go into the woods. Deep into the forest in a shack lived a bear family. A broad-shouldered papa bear, a medium-sized mama bear, and a baby bear. Mama bear always woke up early to prepare oatmeal porridge for breakfast. One morning, baby bear woke up earlier than usual and wanted to eat his porridge. But it was too hot. Mama, can we go out for a walk in the woods until our porridge cools down? Mama, Papa and Baby Bear left their porridges on the table and went out for a walk. The same morning, Goldilocks was playing in the backyard while waiting for her mum to prepare breakfast. 
but she was so bored of playing in the same yard all the time, and she was very curious about the deep parts of the forest. What would happen if I just went for a walk? She looked around, seeing that no one was around. She began running into the forest. When she got tired, she stopped and looked around. What a beautiful forest! Flowers, trees. Why didn't I come here before? She began to walk deeper into the forest. In the meantime, walking around with his family, the baby bear saw a beehive on the branch of a tree. Such a big beehive! I'm sure it is full of honey. Papa, can we eat some honey? No, my boy. That belongs to the bees. It's their home. We can't go in anybody's home and eat their food. It's not right. You're right. I think I will have to wait until we go home for my breakfast. Meanwhile, Goldilocks walked all by herself for such a long time. Finally, she got lost. She tried to turn back, but could not make out the right way. She got really tired and hungry. She was almost in tears of her tiredness. She walked a little more, and finally she came to the end of the road. And she came across the house of the bear family, in between the trees. She quietly approached the house, walked around it, but she could not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Then she looked through the window. She saw three hot, steamy plates on the table. She went back to the door again, and this time she knocked hard. The door opened. Goldilocks was overjoyed. She looked in and yelled, "Anybody home?" When there was no answer, she entered. She approached the table. On the table, there were three bowls of porridge: one big, one medium-sized, and one small. Because she was so hungry, she wanted to eat the big one first. But the moment she put the spoon in her mouth, whew, her mouth burned, because the porridge was still too hot. She immediately reached the medium bowl, but she did not want to eat this either because it was too cold. It's too cold. Finally, she dipped her spoon into the smallest one. Hmm, this porridge is neither cold nor too hot. It's exactly the way I want it. So she ate all the porridge in the smallest bowl. When she was done with her breakfast and felt full, she wanted to sit on one of the three chairs in front of the chimney to rest for a while. One of the three chairs was a big one, the other one medium, and the last one was a small one. First, she tried to sit on the big one, but she couldn't even climb on it. She tried the medium one, but this one was very hard. It was very uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest one. This one was very comfortable, and exactly her size. But suddenly, the chair broke into pieces with a very loud noise. Goldilocks found herself on the floor, and she did not know what to do. She walked through to the next door, and here there were three beds: a big, a medium-sized, and a small one. First, she tried the big bed. This one was too big for her, and also too hard. Second one was a little bigger than her size, but also too soft. So she lied down on the third and smallest bed. This one was exactly her size, and it was very comfortable. So comfortable that Goldilocks fell asleep right away. Whilst Goldilocks was sleeping, the bear family came back home. Papa Bear had some wood with him that he collected for the chimney. Mama Bear had fresh berries, and Baby Bear just could not wait to have his porridge. When they arrived home, 
they went straight to the table. Papa Bear had a look at his bowl and was so angry. Somebody tasted my porridge. Mama Bear also looked at her bowl. Somebody also tasted my porridge. And when Baby Bear looked at his bowl, he began to cry. <laughs> that somebody also tasted my oatmeal porridge. Not only tasted it, also ate it all. <laughs> they got up and started to look around. Papa Bear noticed his chair in front of the chimney. Somebody sat on my chair. Look, it's on a different spot. And then it was Mama Bear's turn to complain. Somebody also sat on my chair. And just like before, the baby bear began to cry again. <laughs> Somebody also sat on my chair, but broke it too. <laughs> the bear family curiously went to the bedroom. Somebody lied on my bed. Look how it's undone. Somebody lied on mine too. Somebody lied on my bed too. Then is still sleeping in it. <laughs> Papa Bear walked next to Baby Bear's bed and saw that someone really was sleeping in his bed. Slowly lifted up the blankets and they were really surprised to see a little girl sleeping in the bed. What is a little girl doing in our house? <laughs> Tell this little girl to get out of my bed now! <laughs> Waking up to Baby Bear's crying, Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her and she ran out of the room in great fear. She went out of the house and started running without looking back. She got breathless from running, but she did not stop. And she didn't even know which way to go. Right at that moment, she saw her parents coming across from the forest. When she didn't end up going back home, they went out looking for her. Goldilocks was very happy to see her parents. She ran and hugged her mother. <laughs> oh, Mummy! We were so worried. Are you okay? From now on, I will always listen to you. I will never leave without letting you know. <laughs> Goldilocks hugged her parents really tight. From that day on, as she promised, she always listened to her parents and did nothing without having their permission. She was a well-behaved and kind girl forever. Stubborn Baby Elephant Dimbo once upon a time, there was a baby elephant named Dimbo who lived with his parents and was very bored of his life in the forest. He wanted to go far and explore new places. He would go around the whole forest and meet new people. But his friend, the little mouse, kept telling him that the world was very big and that there were too many other places still to be seen. So Dimbo made up his mind he was going to go on a long journey and explore new destinations. One day, he went over to his parents to tell them all about it. I'm bored of being in the same forest. I want to go and explore new places. My baby, this is our home. And plus, we don't know what's out there for us. Out of the forest? Humans can be very dangerous. Timbo listened to his parents, but did not really take notice of what was being said. He still wanted to see the world out of the forest. The same night, after everyone fell asleep, he left home and began to walk towards the end of the forest. It was now too dark. He could hardly find his way. Right at that moment, he realised that something was coming towards him. Suddenly, before he could move further, he found himself in a big net. He tried to get away, but there was no hope. After a while, he heard some noises. People yelling, cheering. 
We got him! Yay! We, we got him! him. Oh, 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 yeah! yeah. yeah. Don Hall is back! Come on, come on! Right on. Before he could even understand what was happening, Jimbo moved up from the ground and into a dark box. The lid of the box shut down on him and the box suddenly began to move. Scared little Jimbo did not know what to do. Suddenly he heard a voice. So they caught you too, huh? When he looked at the direction of the sound, he realised it was one of the monkeys from the forest. Who got me? Humans! But why did they catch me? I didn't do anything to them. I didn't do anything either, but they're planning to do something to us. The monkey was right. The people who caught Dimbo and the monkey were working for a circus in the town. They were taking the animals that they had caught to the circus to use them in the shows. In the morning, when she could not see her baby, the mummy elephant got worried. She asked her children if they had seen Dimbo or not, but they had also not seen him since last night. In a hurry, Mummy Elephant went next to Daddy Elephant. Dimbo is not here, he's gone! So he did what he said. We have to find him before something happens to him. His family found Dimbo's friend, the mouse, and told him all that had happened. The mouse was really sad. It's all because of me. I told him that there's also life outside the forest. Don't worry, we will find him. Days had passed. Dimbo was held in an area surrounded by barbed wire next to the circus tent. His friend the monkey was kept in a cage. The people of the circus were preparing for the shows that were going to begin one week later. Dimbo was watching these people circus tents and the trucks in astonishment because it was the first time he was seeing things such as these. What is this thing called circus? And why are they keeping me here? While Dimbo was thinking about this, two men came and took him out of the barbed wire fence. When brought to this circus, Dimbo was horrified by the view he saw. A while later, the owner of the circus, who was also an animal trainer, came next to Dimbo with a whip in his hand. You will do the tricks exactly as I will show you. Best part of the show will be yours alone, or else you will not like your punishment. Dimbo was very frightened. He tried to do the tricks the circus owner was teaching him. At the same time, his friend the mouse was looking for Dimbo all over the forest. He asked about him to all the animals he saw, but no one knew a thing. A small pink bird saw the hopeless mouse wandering around and flew next to him to ask what his problem was. I am looking for my friend Dimbo. Dimbo? You mean the stubborn baby elephant Dimbo? Yes. I think he left the forest and went to the city. As my mother told me, when I was a little baby, Dimbo saved my life. If he's in trouble now, I would like to help. You can fly to the city to look for Dimbo. If he is there, I'm sure you're going to find him. Sure. Don't you worry. I will find him. The little pink bird went up immediately and began to fly towards the city. After flying for a couple of hours, she noticed the big colourful circus tents and some trucks in the distance. She flew over to them. And what did she see? some people putting Dimbo back into the fenced area. She immediately flew next to Dimbo. Hello, Dimbo. I'm so happy that I found you. Your family and your friends are so worried. Some people have imprisoned me here. They will put me in the show next week. 
Really? You don't worry, we will get you out of here. I will now go and let your family know about the situation. The bird flew up into the sky and made her way to the forest. Dimbo was very happy because he knew he was going to be saved. The little bird went next to Dimbo's family and told them all about it. Mummy and Daddy Elephant were very happy. We'll leave early in the morning. We will take our baby back from the humans. Early in the morning, Dimbo's family, the mouse and the bird began their journey to the city. The elephants and the mouse were not as fast as the bird. There was a long journey waiting for them. Back at the circus, Dimbo and the other animals were preparing for the big show. While the wild monkey was being funny with the clowns, Dimbo was trying to do the tricks the circus owner had taught him. Come on now, you have to jump higher. The circus owner was asking him to do things that an elephant could not do. So Dimbo remembered what had happened to him when he tried to do the things that the other animals had done. Mommy and Daddy can come quickly to save me from here. Exactly one day had passed by, and it was now the show day. Lights of the circus were shining, and a lot of people were coming into the tent. Dimbo's family, the mouse and the little pink bird, came next to the circus tent. In the area that was fenced with barbed wire, they saw Dimbo. There he is! Yes, but how will we save him from there? I will go talk to Dimbo. I am coming too. The mouse and the bird went over to Dimbo. The mouse went under the fence and went next to Dimbo. Psst! Dimbo, look here! Hey, buddy! Meanwhile, the little pink bird got a closer look at the iron door. The door is locked. It will be hard to find the keys. When it's my turn, they will open the door. Then we can run away. Okay, we will make a plan. Wait for us. In the meantime, the show continued at the circus. The monkey and the clown were trying to be funny so that the guests could laugh. After they finished their show and left the stage, the circus owner went on the stage. Dear guests, next we will have our magician on stage. The circus owner left the stage and continued to the back. He asked his men to bring the elephant. His men went outside and opened the door to the fence where Dimbo was kept. Right at that moment, there was a loud noise, and when they looked where it was coming from, they saw four elephants charging towards them. The men left everything and ran away. And when they left, Dimbo could easily escape and was very happy to see his family. Come on, we need to get away fast. No! Upon Dimbo's answer, they were all shocked. First, we have to save my other imprisoned friends. Let's distract them so that the mouse and the bird can open their cages. The four elephants began to run around the circus. Daddy Elephant went into the tent. Everybody began to run around in fear. At the same time, the bird was opening the locks of the cages. The mouse was opening the gate so that all the animals could get out. They all ran away into the forest. The circus owner was shocked and did not understand what was going on. He was furious. While he was running around, the whole tent came down on him. Dimbo, his family and his friends stopped to take a break when they were in a safe area away from the circus. They were all tired but very happy. At that present moment, the monkey came next to them. Dimbo, I thank you on behalf of all the animals you saved from the circus. 
Instead of running away while you had the chance, you chose to save us too. My friends, I'm sure you would do the same for me. Living in the forest taught me friendship and to help one another. Yes, we always should care for one another, otherwise life can be very, very hard on us. Well, Dimbo, when is your next trip? Next time you'll decide to leave the forest, do let us know about it. Daddy, Mommy, my sister, my brother, I'm really sorry that I got you worried. I made a mess. Don't worry, I won't ever leave this beautiful forest again. So they all continued their journey back to the forest. Without ever complaining again, Timbo lived a happy life in the forest. Adi se baba, 